Let us pray together. Our Father God, thank you for your plan of salvation, your plan which always centred on this moment in history, this moment when you gave yourself on the cross to take our sin. Thank you for revealing yourself in this way, in the person of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your humble obedience to the will of the Father. We thank you for coming among us in human form. We thank you for your example and teaching as you walked this earth. And we thank you for giving yourself for us. We have no right to expect you to reach out to us in this way, but you do. So our Father, it is our joy and privilege to worship you this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We're going to hear the uh, account of the first Good Friday as it's found in uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 15. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law and the whole Sanhedrin reached a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away and turned him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things, so again Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But still Jesus made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the feast to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder during the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one that you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him! they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder. Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews. Again and again, they struck him on the head with a staff and spat on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Christ, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Well, thank you to Martin and Anna 
and Anne for reading so beautifully for us. When Jesus became a man, uh, as soon as he entered into human history, he became a victim of human sin. And uh, Good Friday is a day packed full with the ways Jesus is a victim of human sin. To start with is injustice. There was injustice because the trial was a complete sham. And there was injustice because he, he didn't blaspheme. Uh, we know from a number of places in the New Testament, from f numerous references, that those uh, rulers of the Jewish nation wanted Jesus dead. There was no way a trial there before them would be a fair trial. And also we, we find that that accusation of blasphemy, that uh, technically Jesus doesn't blaspheme. Uh, certainly he would have annoyed them by claiming to be Messiah, and he would have scandalised them by talking about sitting at the right hand of the Most High, or or the power, um, and they saw that as putting himself perhaps equal with God. But you notice he, he doesn't say the name of God. He doesn't uh, misuse the name of God. He doesn't uh, in any way pull God down. Uh, it's just a claim he makes, uh, but they find him guilty. So there's that fundamental injustice going on in the trial. Now the trial, of course, wasn't in our reading today. Um, some people will see it on, on the Thursday night. Uh, the way I read it, I think it comes into the the Friday, the Friday morning, very early in the morning, he's being tried and they find him guilty. Then of course there's um, the, uh, the sin of betrayal. The, the betrayal by Peter, of course, is the famous one, but probably far more consequ consequential on Good Friday is the betrayal by Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate absolutely knew that Jesus was an innocent man. He had the power uh, he had the legal power and authority to say, no, this man should not die. But he didn't have the, the courage to actually defend Jesus. How many people throughout human history have suffered because the powers did not defend the weak against false, false accusation? And indeed, on a, on a more personal level, how often do we fail to defend those who are vulnerable because we're too cowardly to stand up for them? Then, of course, uh, there's that whole issue of hypocrisy that Jesus was a victim of. Uh, those religious leaders, it, it always amazes me how, how they could be so keen to have this trial um, and in it to accuse Jesus of blasphemy. And, and, and the whole way the trial was set up, they, they, they rip up the letter of the law, or the spirit of the law, rather. But... but you know, they, they miss, they miss the reality that in what Jesus did, the way he acted, the way he spoke, he, he, he conveyed the goodness of God there. And it, I always find it a, a, a deep, deep irony that these men who, who, who commit such great acts of, of uh, um, injustice and being unfaithful to God and not defending God's way, these are the very men who will come before Pontius Pilate and say, we can't come into your palace because that will make us unclean. And they say to Pontius Pilate, please break the, the, the legs of those criminals on the cross because they need to die quickly because we can't have criminals on the cross on the Sabbath. They, they want to keep their religious niceness whilst being completely unjust. But of course, the theme which really runs through this day is violence and derision and mockery whether that's the, the crowd baying for the blood of Jesus, saying crucify him, whether it's the soldiers who uh, want to dress Jesus up in that mock way as a king and then uh, abuse him, whether it's the onlookers who, who look at the, the crucifixion and, and, and choose to pour scorn on Jesus on the cross, and even the leaders, the leaders, these men who, who supposedly are, are spiritual men, intelligent men, men of learning, they pour scorn on Jesus. They say, if you're, if you're the Messiah, if you're the Son of God, come down and prove it. Isn't it incredible that, that one human can look at another human being who's dying a dreadful death and the response, instead of being tears or horror, the response is mockery. Dreadful. But of course, central, absolutely central to the violence of this day is crucifixion, that awful means of death that is invented by the Romans
to kill people in a way that was dreadfully, dreadfully, dreadfully demeaning and painful. Long lasting, took a long time to die. In so many ways, we see that on Good Friday, Jesus was the victim of the sins of those people on that day. I want to introduce our next song, and it's, it's likely that you won't know this song. It's a very beautiful song. Um, if you begin to pick up the, the sense of how that song moves, you can sing along to it. Uh, it's called This Is Love, and it's by Scott Underwood.